Hi there, let me present for you a Princess V50. 2018 boat, absolutely presented in stunning condition. The most amazing amount of space on board this boat with three living spaces, two cabins, twins, double. Can't wait to show you this boat. So stay tuned and you've got the rest of the walkthrough tour coming up very, very soon. Hi there, my name's Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales and it is a beautiful crisp November day down here in Swanwick Marina. Now I'm standing now on the transom of this Princess V50 and it is a beautiful boat and I have to say I think it has established itself as my favourite boat that we've listed. So let's start on the rear, seems like a good place to start as usual. So what I'm standing on here at the moment is a fully hydraulic bathing platform. Now what that means is that this platform lowers down into the water and allows a tender to go onto these tender chocks that are here and then be lashed down onto these um, fixing points. It's a really simple and easy way to put a tender on to a boat like this. But in a lot of boats, you only have a hydraulic um, bathing platform and you don't have a passerelle. But this boat is fitted out to what we call the med spec. And nestling inside that little compartment there is a full passerelle. Now what that means is that if this boat were to go out to the med, where stern two mooring is very popular, where you can perhaps have a big sea wall here, loads of restaurants in front, you can then get on and off this boat with ease. So this boat has got both the hydraulic platform and the passerelle, but by being med-spec, it means it's also got heating, and that is reverse cycle heating through the air conditioning units. So this boat can be both cooled and heated through the air conditioning, which is fantastic. You will notice just behind me, one of my favorite features on large power boats like this, a pre-lit LED sign. It looks fantastic. It's called Supine, this boat. Um, and you can see this LED sign is nestling on top of a little storage locker. So inside here, you've got a pretty good space, actually. You'd get probably room in there for four or five fenders and put your shore power cable, buckets, cleaning equipment, etc. So it's a good useful space. Because of course, this boat doesn't have a tender garage. So some 50 foot boats would have a tender garage, which on top of it have a large amount of space for sunbathing. But of course, I quite often wonder if that's a bit of a waste of space for that sun pad at the back. Because on this boat, I'll show you in a second, in the cockpit area, you've got a great big U-shaped seating area and the table drops down to create a huge sun pad. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds on this boat. The quality of the teak and the quality of this boat is exceptional throughout. You can see the teak is all really nice, thick, great quality teak throughout the boat. And let's step up into the cockpit and carry on onto the side decks. I kind of want to sit down here and show you this, but I'll come back to that later. The side decks on this boat is an option from factory, have all been laid out to teak. Now this is real teak that runs the whole way down these side decks. And they're big, solid side decks and very wide for great access as well. So you can see as I'm walking down, I'm not needing to, to nestle like that on some boats. It's really, really nice and easy. You've got good access all the way around, so it's nice and safe when you're at sea. And for effect, you've also got really nice low-level LED lighting that runs throughout. And that's a white LED light underneath here. And you may have noticed earlier on the underwater lights on this boat complement the white LEDs, but you can also turn them blue. So you've got the option on those to be either blue or white. So as we walk around, the teak runs all the way around the front of here. You can see there's a stainless steel delta anchor. And I really like boats that also not only have a stainless steel anchor, but they also have stainless steel chain. And this boat's got that. So if we look in here, it's very well thought out in here. Sounds sad to get excited about an anchor locker, but you can see there's a chute there for the chain so it doesn't damage the gel coat when it goes in. And you've also got two bent fender baskets down here where you could put two fenders in each of those. So four fenders can go into here. And this little hoop here just shows how it's been thought through because on there goes your lines to tie the fenders on so they get, don't get lost in there. And then you have a quick head in there to fish them out. Of course, as you'd expect, you have um, up and down controls for the windlass, but you can, of course, uh, work that from the, um, the driving position as well. This boat's got a really nice large sun pad area on the front here. You'd get comfortably four people on there, and you can see for the winter, it's got a cover that protects everything there as well. You'll see when we go down into this, um, this guest cabin in the front, you've got a very large hatch here as well, which would be great for getting ventilation through, letting the light in, and just creating quite a nice light, airy space. 
And while talking about the light, airy space that's created, something I really like is that on these more modern hardtop boats, you end up having these skylights cut into the roofs, and that adds so much more light coming into the cabin there. So on this boat, you can see really lovely big windows, big skylights, and this um, saloon space really is dominated by light when I show you that a little bit later. Up on the top here, you've got two domes. Um, they've been wrapped, so it's a really nice sort of anthracite colour there. Um, and nestling in there are a satellite TV, so the boat's actually got Sky TV fitted. And then you've got a really nice Raymarine open array radar there. So, let's step back into what is one of three seating areas on this boat. So this is the cockpit space and this is, where, this is where the parties happen, this is where the fun with friends happens. So this, I would say, you would comfortably get 10 people around here. Um, it's a really nice table that is also a high-low table. So I talked about the sun pad area earlier. This table can just be adjusted and moved right the way down. And the sun pads are actually in the shower cubicle, and I'll show you those a bit later. And that creates a really good sun pad space here. So in terms of sunbathing space, you've got four people go up on the bow, two people back here, lots and lots of space. I also like that quite often on boats like this, where you have sort of this indoor-outdoor living, they quite often don't have a camper cover on the back here. So these seats just end up just being covered, but not usable during the winter. But that's not the case on this boat. You've got a really good set of covers all the way around here. So all of the, you, all of the seating spaces are usable all year round. Inside here, you have a cockpit grill. And it's a proper cockpit grill there. So cockpit grill, you've got a fridge, I just, just in here, ice, ice maker. John, see, Jonathan's with me today, and he just points. He's going to point out the things I say wrong. I thought it was a fridge. It's an ice maker. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, so yeah, ice maker in there, and then just in this side, you've got more storage there, so you can see tools, ropes, stuff to maintain the boat there. The storage space throughout the whole of the boat as well. So underneath all of these seats, you've got storage lockers as well. And just down in here, you have the engine bay. Now this boat is powered by twin IPS 600s. So these are derivatives, well, they are the Volvo Penta D6, but they're called the IPS 600. And they generate 435 horsepower each. It's a really nice economical cruise speed for a boat of this speed, boat of this size. Um, it probably feels right to hand over to Jonathan. Do you want to go and have a look down in the engine bay? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, do we do that? Right, I'm going to pass Thanks that across. Much. Thank you. As you know, John Jonathan knows all these, all things green and mechanical. Well, you're going to really test me now because I've not been down here yet. Oh, well, let's have a all look. All right, see what, I can, see what I can spot. All right. So, oh, I like, oh, like a ladder. Like so, a first of all, way. having a nice ladder down. You can always tell how good an engine bay is if I have to put my shoes on or not to come down here. <laughs> um, but down here, I really like the fact that it's laid out with a... Um, there's another skin in here which is keeps everything nice and clean, very easy to clean and keep neat and tidy down here. Um, but there's actually tons of room. So if you come down, the one benefit of the IPS 600s is they're quite a compact engine um, for, the, for the power they produce. So you end up with loads and loads of space down here and you can see how well insulated it is as well. Um, also down here is your generator. So you've got your 11 kilowatt generator here, which is more than enough power to operate your air conditioning, your reverse cycle heating, and anything else you want to operate whilst you're, um, whilst you're out at sea and not connected to shore power. Um, the fuel tanks are either side, very well insulated as well. Very easy access to everything. I don't often see fuel tanks where you can actually get to the top of them very easily. But look at that. And they're the... Um, controls for shutting off the fuel lines which you can do up at the helm um, batteries under here again well ventilated loads of room actually this is a pleasure to be down here actually i really like this um, battery charger access fuel pre-filter access um, everything um, you've got 240 power as well there's twin sockets here he's got two tube heaters keeping it nice and warm in here we're just getting to the back end of november now so temperatures are starting to drop um, but generally, it's all very nice. And of course, being IPS drives, um, they are attached to the bottom of the hull. So there's nothing on the transom sticking out. Um, so they're attached to the bottom and you can see how they are fitted there. And again, the bilge is everything's nice and clean and dry, as you would expect of a princess of this quality and of this age. 
So all in all, I'm actually walking around this engine bay, which is quite rare. I'm going to pop back up now. Hand you back to Andrew. Thank you. Um, but yeah, very nice and easy and easy to do engine checks, actually. Um, there's one thing I would say, actually, let's just pop down quickly. So engine checks are often quite difficult on larger boats, depending on the size of the engine, the engine access. But really, the simple things you need to do here is to be able to make sure that water is flowing through the engine from the seawater side. And actually, each engine has a clear lid. So you can easily spot if the water is flowing through there. Um, also, the dipsticks for the engines are just there, the red tops on them. So you can check your oils. You can check your coolants just in here and you can easily see all the way around the engine. And that's half the battle is being able to check around and just being able to spot things um, as they develop before they turn from a small problem into a big one. But everything is easy accessible down here. I'm really impressed with the engine space, but that's just my opinion on the engine bay. Right, I'm gonna stop this up. Thank you, Jonathan. I, so I'll spring that on you, but I know it's always welcome your, your views and your feedback on engine bays. <laughs> now, I think these engines as well, um, you can see it's very well lit. So it's actually all lit down there. And um, so we haven't added any lights down there. It's just how it is. And we are getting into the evening now as well. So the light yeah. is dropping. And we wanted to do this of the evening anyway, didn't we? Just yeah, we did. To get, so you can get the benefit of the lights, the lighting effect. Yeah, we find, so we do so many of these daylight, um, bright, bright daylights, but actually these boats look amazing at night, particularly during the winter. They're such a cosy place to be. So we chose the timing where it's just actually coming into its own now. Just something I just mentioned, there is a life raft on this boat um, and it's stored just inside here. So it's a really nice compact life raft in there um, in a really nice, easy to access life raft locker there as well. So you will have had a glimpse now into what is the raised saloon area. And I think it's a really, really nice space. I love the upholstery color. In fact, I, I mentioned to my wife that I like this upholstery color so much, I might find out exactly what it is to put it on my own boat because I think it looks brilliant. It looks so premium. And I like the fact the use of the scatter cushions just to break the colors up. It looks really, really nice. Um, this table has also been replaced. So the owner has put a new table on here, which is slightly smaller than the original table. He said that the table that came with the boat was actually really, really large and a little bit cumbersome so he had this one bespokenly made. Um, there's blinds which can be pulled down to create lots of privacy in all of here but we thought we'll show it in its in its maximum light facility. Um, you've got lights up in the ceiling I like the way that they're they're recessed into these mirrored panels and you can just feel this boat oozes princess quality throughout. On this side you have a really nice um, sideboard and of course you're probably guessing what's inside there I like the fact all I need to do is just press that once and by pressing it once you just keep your finger on it that opens up and I like that opens as well normally the TVs lift that hatch up but the hatch up <laughs> comes up by itself and you've got a really really nice sized television coming up now it's a full smart TV so you've got access to all of your apps and everything that you'd want to have and it really turns this space into a beautiful family living area there. You also have a fridge so the fridge is just inside here so you've got a Dometic fridge um, and that's good access for your beers or anything that you want to have when you're just upside up here. And then you've got lots of storage space in here for alcohol. Very important on a boat like this. And I really love the fact you pull this out and you've got these little crystal princess glasses all in their own um, loca locations. A fusion head unit here, um, and that's mapped together with a Sky HD system. And then of course you've got your satellite track vision for the domes upstairs. So the seating area, this is a fixed table here, so this doesn't drop down to give an extra area, but you do have these really nice little seats, which are the perfect height to give a bit of extra space here. So if you've got, let's say, six guests around this side, you've got extra area here, so you can have someone sitting here, but what's also quite nice is use these as footstools. So if you sat here watching a movie, lay out from here and put your feet on that. That's also a nice thing to do. So we'll tuck those back into there. But everything just feels very, very premium. I like the fact that that could have just been a simple bit of design, but instead they've put a, a gap around it so you can lift it and pull it in and out. Little things like that where Princess have thought about that really nicely. The helm position on this boat is an absolute joy. It's a double helm position and everything is laid out beautifully in front of you. You've got the seven inch Volvo Penta display in front of you here, a really nice big 16 inch Raymarine chart plotter. Um, it's one of the hybrid touches, so it's a hybrid touch screen, but in, if you're in rough weather, it can be quite hard to press touch screens. So it's nice that you've got full control over the cursor and actual buttons on the chart plotter here. I'm a big fan of that. 
Something Jonathan um, identified as an issue on some IPS drive boats is that when you're driving the IPS drives, um, quite often the throttles are positioned in a strange way. It's very easy to knock the throttle on, which then knocks out your IPS. But I like the fact that the joystick is separate on this boat. You can rest your hand here and just gently hold the, the IPS uh, joystick. Everything is to hand here. You've got fantastic vision straight down the boat when you're sitting down. But of course, you can open up the roof and then stand, and that will then give you nice visibility straight out. And then for manoeuvring, I'm not going to open the roof now, but for manoeuvring, you'd have your head out and then just resting down here on the IPS drive to give you perfect control. Jonathan, I feel like you've spotted something. What have you, what have you spotted? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, um, you're perfectly right in what you said. Um, but what I also like is the fact it's got the power window. Oh, yeah, I forgot about those. So when you're at the helm, you can operate your power window and you can actually then properly stick your head out. Yeah, that's true. And you can see the pontoon, you can lean out and see the pontoon. Yep. So when you're manoeuvring with the roof shut, you can still have good visibility because you actually stick your head out and look back and forward. Uh, I really like the yeah. size of that as well. So quite often the side windows are quite small. Yeah. But that's quite a nice size one. Just talking about manoeuvrability, I mentioned earlier that the um, the couple that own this boat came to see me down at Hamble Point at the weekend. Um, I should also state that there were just two of them on board um, and they brought this boat into a, a berth they'd never been into before totally expertly done and the, the the way that these IPS drives work it's such a joy to maneuver boats like this and it just takes all of the almost all the guesswork out of maneuvering a boat you you push the joystick where you want the boat to go and it and it works so a 50 foot boat years ago you wouldn't have dreamt just handling it with just a couple but now it's a, it's very very easy to do that with a boat like this um, everything else here is pretty straightforward. I like the fact it's got a bow thruster. Uh, it gives a bit of redundancy there. So the IPS doesn't use a bow thruster, but if you were ever to have an issue with the IPS, you can use this boat totally traditionally to moor up using your throttles and your bow thrusters. So it's nice to see some redundancy on there. Um, also good to see on the, the trim tabs, you've got a trim tab display. Um, and quite often boats, they don't say where the trim tabs are, but I like the fact that you can see if they're attracted or if they're down. So I'm just going to put that window back up in case I forget it. So I'm going to do it now. Oh, look at that. So again, back to the touchscreen. I can press it and it's now going up without me touching it. I like that. And there are two windows, so I won't open it, but there's another window on this side, which again can be operated from that side as well. So really nice little features there just to make life easy. And I have to say, in, if you're moored up in a bay, drop that window, drop that window, have the back open. This would feel really, really nice. So let's step down. Now, one other thing I like on this boat is it has two really distinct feelings. So up here, you've got this color upholstery, this color carpet, but when you come downstairs, it changes. You've now got a cream carpet and a really light cream upholstery. So it feels like there's two different layouts. The V50, of course, came with, three, with two layout options. You can have um, a bunk bed in this area here, but the person who specified this boat from you didn't want it as a three cabin, so you've got this additional space down here, which I really like. And it's nice to be close to the person who's doing the cooking, so your family time is really enhanced by having this extra space. And you also have another Samsung Smart TV just on that side here. So you've got two spaces, particularly if you've got two children, they're arguing about what to watch. Don't argue, one goes upstairs, one goes downstairs. You can tell I have children that argue sometimes. Um, the table here drops down, so it's on these um, gas struts, so you open those hatches up, hatches, latches, not hatches, um, and that drops down, and then there's an infill cushion there, so that would provide another double bed for somebody if you have guests staying. The galley is beautifully appointed. It's not huge, but why do you need a huge galley on a boat? It's got everything you need. It's got a three burner um, hob. You've got this really nice, um, you don't often see uh, extraction vents on boats, and I think that's really nice. And then you've got these you know, three mackerel up there. They're, living, they're, lo they're loving life, aren't they, up there on the, against the wall? Um, you've got, obviously, power points throughout. The blinds, the window, one of the big differences between the Princess V50 and the predecessor, the V48, is the light and the windows. The V48, you just had um, three big windows on the side and then a couple of portholes down the side. But the V50 has this swooping line all the way down it, which lets so much more light in. And you can see that here if you're in the galley, you've got a beautiful panoramic view straight out. Um, the worktop is all in beautiful condition, lots of storage space. Um, you've got a bin built into there as well. You've got a combi microwave. Little touches there. So everywhere you look, in fact, look at that. That's clever. You've got a hidden, hidden drawer there for your cutlery. I like that. So everywhere you look, you've got storage space, and it's a very well thought out space. 
And of course, on a boat of this size, you get a large fridge freezer. So on the top there, you've got a massive fridge, and then underneath, you've got a proper fridge freezer down there as well. So another freezer compartment just down there, which is nice on a boat of this size. Um, let's start off in the big cabin, and I'll go and show you the guest afterwards. This cabin I absolutely love. I have yet to spend a night on a big midship cabin. That's one of my aims, to spend a night on a boat just like this. Um, this space is just beautiful. I love the big sweeping windows down here. Good headroom height. Not, uh, I might get you to test this in a minute, Jonathan, because as everyone knows, you're six foot. I'm not quite that tall, but I've got excellent headroom height here. Um, and I just got loads and loads of space. LED lighting throughout underneath the bed, which makes it feel very, very high end and premium. A proper sofa over there. I mean, it's not, that's not just a little, that's not just a little seat. You've got a proper two piece sofa there. And then this excellent dressing area here. Um, it's not a much more to say apart from it's just an amazing space and a proper painting on the wall there. I would have guessed that's not from factory. It might be the owners. I don't know if that's staying, but it looks beautiful. CJ Tyra, whoever that artist is, it's a beautiful light on the breaking waves there. Um, LED um, side lights, as you'd expect. So nice reading lights there. Storage throughout this whole area and two bedside cupboards with storage built into there as well. Another Samsung smart TV at the back here, so you can sit in, sit in bed and watch a, watch a movie. And just the premium feel in this boat really is beautiful. It's a, it's a walnut finish, it's a matte walnut finish, and it feels just fantastic. This shower is enormous. So if you walk into here, just open up this door here, and you can see a really, really spacious two-person shower, I would say. Um, you've got tons and tons of space here. Big window there, I would suggest that might need to be covered up unless you, you know, like to be watched. So it's a really good space, good headroom height here and a good shower. Everything is amazing. It's a really nice spacious area. And of course, I always talk about these designer sinks. I love a countertop sink that's got one of those in here. The storage space, which is all under here. So you've loads and loads of space. And there's another one on the other side here. Electric flush toilets, as you'd imagine. And not much more I can say, but a very nice head. Let's close that back up again. Okay, so that concludes this area, but I just think it feels incredibly premium, very, very high end, and a very, very nice place to spend an evening. Right, but of course, that's not the only bedroom. There is a guest bedroom, and the best guest bedroom Again, I really like, it's got a technology pack in it. So again, you've got another television. So you've got four TVs on this boat, um, all of which Samsung smart TVs. And you've got a cool design here where you can se separate this out. So if you've got two children, you can separate this out. So you've got two separate beds in here, or very, very quickly, you pull these across and you've now got a very good size double bed, which is fantastic. And it's a good size double bed as well. It's not just a small double. I like the headboard, it's got a nice design um, fabric on the back there. And then if we look up, you'll see the benefit of this really nice big skylight that I identified earlier. It's a double size, you'd normally think that might be just square, but instead it's a big rectangular space. And these windows, as you can see from this design of the boat, they taper off towards the front, but you still get this lovely sweep of light all the way through, but you can open it. You've got two opening portholes on each side. You've got full hanging height in here and a separate fusion sound system in this cabin as well. And as with many of these boats, if I just go into the here, you have a Jack and Jill door, so I can appear through here. And so here you have the what are considered to be the day heads and also the shared heads with the guest cabin. And I mentioned about infill cushions. The grey one standing up there is the infill cushion for the sun pad at the back. And then the, the um, upholstery, upholstery? Fabric, that's the word I think of. The fabric infills there for the one at the top. Once again, electric flush toilet, countertop sink, and storage space galore. It's a good size, this one. The shower is smaller on this one than the other one. The other one is vast. Headroom height is enormous. So I think, I think it's almost seven foot would probably fit into here. So I've got a good, pretty much foot clearance ahead of my head there. It's a very nice head. So, Jonathan, anything I've forgotten? Anything I've anything you've noticed when I've been walking around that is worth mentioning about? Well, I think you've covered most of it. Okay. Um, you can see the air, air conditioning controls in each cabin. Yes. 
That's a good point. So you've got air con control here just next to you. There's also one in the main cabin as well. Uh, did we spot one in the front cabin? I'm sure there is. I'll double check that. I'll just to denote how many areas we have to heat and cool. Uh, yes, there is. No, absolutely right. So there is another another air conditioning unit. So we've got three air con units, but also I noticed there's a vent up in the up here as well. So there is a. Um, Here, so obviously, oh, that's nice. We're not just heating and cooling down there, we're heating and cooling this area as well. Yep, um, which is again, this becomes part of your living area, doesn't it? It does. I think I shall have a sit down to do the, the final wrap up here. Good, well, that's, that's good news. We don't think I've missed anything. I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Excellent. Right, well, I think that pretty much concludes it then. So as you've probably told, because I got quite excited about this boat, it is a beautiful boat. The Princess V50 has very quickly established itself as one of my favourite boats I've done this walkthrough tour. Um, it oozes quality. I love the spaciousness. Um, the th some people need the three cabins. For me personally, I love having an extra amount of space down below, and it just makes this boat feel enormous. So this boat's available with us at Parker Adams Boat Sales. be delighted to show you the boat and we look forward to showing you the next walkthrough tour. Please do remember, if you've got this far, then you've obviously liked something, so do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And also, another thing just to mention is we've also recently launched our Superstore. If you haven't checked it out yet, then have a look. We'll put a link underneath the video. Any upgrades you're thinking about over the winter, we'd be delighted to talk to you about those upgrades through our Parker Adams Superstore. Thanks as always for watching, and we will see you on the next video. All the best.